The Smart Lens is a scleral lens design exclusively manufactured by Precision and Cardinal. Hello, and welcome to this video on the Smart Lens scleral design, which is distributed across the world by Spectrum International and was developed by the CAT Design Group. My name is Randy Kojima. This training tool will review a wide range of topics in as short a time possible. The goal is to provide you with some key fitting considerations and tips related to the Smart Lens scleral design. We fit sclerals on some of our toughest patients with extremely complex histories, complications, and conditions. Although the Smart Lens can be highly customized for each case, the fitting can be simplified and narrowed down to two important factors. First is the vault. A well-fit Smart Lens should clear the central, peripheral, and limbal tissue. The practitioner simply needs to ensure we do not bear or touch the corneal or limbal surface before landing far out on the conjunctiva. The construction of the lens makes it possible to clear or vault the cornea regardless of the condition. From normal eye shapes with ocular surface disease through corneal thinning disorders, transplants, and post-refractive surgery patients, the smart lens simply needs to create enough vault to clear over the eye surface regardless of its irregularity. The more regular the eye shape, the more symmetric the tear layer profile will be. As the asymmetry of the eye increases, the asymmetry of the fluid layer will similarly increase. The benefit of a vaulting scleral, like the smart lens, is its ability to manage the highly irregular eye shapes. Even the most prolate or oblate surfaces can be successfully fit by creating enough vault to clear and protect the underlying tissue, while providing an ideal anterior surface to bend light. It is not uncommon for the tear layer thickness to vary by significant degrees as the asymmetry of the eye increases. Do not be concerned. The tear layer profile may be thicker in some areas than it is in others. The benefit of scleral lenses is their ability to vault the irregularity and fill the space between the lens and cornea with fluid. This is what makes scleral lens fitting so forgiving, even on the most challenging cases. Think vault when you approach each patient and each eye. The second fitting consideration is the landing. If the lens vaults through the cornea and limbal tissue, all its pressure will be on the bulbar conjunctiva. An acceptable landing is critical to a healthy and successful fit. Our extensive studies at Pacific University have shown the scleral surface can be best described as asymmetric. The farther and farther from the limbus you measure, the higher the asymmetry. How then can we best align the lens and create an appropriate landing? The standard 16.5 millimeter diameter smart lens employs 150 microns of tericity in its landing. In approximately 78% of patients, this will create the ideal conjunctival alignment centration, rotational stability, and comfort for the patient. In an extremely small percentage of eyes, a lower tericity may be required for the cases with less asymmetry. In some patients, a higher tericity may be required to create a successful fit. However, it is helpful to know the vast majority of the time, the standard 150 micron trial tericity of the 16.5 diameter and the 125 micron tericity of the 15.5 lens will create a forgiving and optimal outcome for the patient. The smart lens also includes 15 millimeter diameter lenses. 
which land closer to the limbus and have non-toric peripheries due to the more symmetric nature of the eye where they touch down. All diameters of the smart lens can be made symmetric, toric, or asymmetric as required by the case. We said we could simplify smart lens fitting and focus on vault and landing. Optimizing these two important fit considerations will increase our chances of a high first fit success and ideal outcome for the patient. However, what are some of the factors that might challenge us along the way? Oxygen permeability is something many practitioners are concerned with. Do scleral lenses provide the eye with enough oxygen transmission? Both research findings and clinical observations across the planet tell us that scleral lenses provide a healthy degree of oxygen supply to the eye. Of course, there are some patients where we may need to be more sensitive about transmission. Corneal transplant cases are a good example. But as with any contact lens fit, we create a healthy relationship, then monitor the patient over time through the follow-up visits to assure the wearer is compliant with instructions and the lens fit is both acceptable and safe. With this in mind, does lens or fluid thickness matter? Research has shown neither appears to make a significant difference to the transmission and patient response with sclerals. The smart lens is thin enough to provide an appropriate oxygen supply while being thick enough to create a stable lens that limits flexing and induced astigmatism. As we said, these lenses are fit on highly asymmetric surfaces, so it's not uncommon to see the fluid layer thicker in some areas and thinner in others. Although we target 200 to 300 microns of post-settling apical clearance, there may be areas the fluid is much thicker where the elevation of the eye severely drops. Don't be concerned. This is to be expected, especially on the highly irregular eyes. The fit considerations we want to focus on are vault the corneal and limbal tissue, land appropriately on the conjunctival without vessel restriction or blanching, monitor the patient over time for adverse signs, but don't attempt to make changes to the lens just because the fluid may be thicker inferiorly than it is in the center or superiorly. Uneven fluid is normal in a scleral patient, partly to do with their centration, or better put, their inherent decentration that tends to be slightly inferior temporal. And asymmetric eyes will have even greater asymmetry of the fluid layer. We have discussed that the smart lens should vault through the corneal and limbal tissue. It is important to order a custom limbal lift zone when there is apparent bearing on the peripheral cornea or sensitive limbus. The lens on the left shows thinning of the fluid nasal superior on this left eye. But this may not be true bearing, and we'll discuss later in this video how to discern whether a modification is necessary. However, the lens on the right shows what appears to be heavy bearing on the peripheral cornea and limbus and should have altered parameters. The image on top shows a smart lens with inadequate vault through the peripheral cornea and limbus. After more settling time, it will surely be bearing on the tissue. The image below shows an increased limbal lift zone, which raises the lens off the peripheral cornea and limbus. Plus five steps is the typical adjustment to create the necessary vault over these sensitive tissues. Vault is the number one consideration related to scleral and smart lens fitting. Personally, I'd rather have more vault than less to ensure the lens doesn't settle into corneal or limbal touch by the end of the day. And as we said, the oxygen supply doesn't appear to be significantly altered by a thicker fluid layer. However, 
there is one instance where excessive vault may create some complications. Conjunctival prolapse can present where the elevation of the eye is low and the vault of the lens high. This usually happens temporal inferior because scleral lenses position down and out. Thankfully, conjunctival prolapse appears to be a relatively benign finding, and typically, as soon as the lens is removed, the loose tissue returns to its normal position. However, if the prolapse is problematic, speak to your smart lens consultant about possible fixes. In cases of excessive limbal vault 360 degrees around, a lower limbal lift zone can be employed. But if the decentration is the principal cause, a smaller diameter of lens will often reduce the space under the lens where the tissue can be pulled under. In this particular example, we see an inferior temporal cone on the axial map. The elevation map shows the extreme drop in corneal height towards the periphery, which coincides with the presentation of the prolapse. The typical inferior temporal position of sclerals coupled with the corneal depression are the major contributors to the prolapse in this case. Let's take a moment to review the smart lens construction and its various zones. In the middle is the central vault zone, which is meant to clear all central corneal tissue. Raising or lowering the sag of lens changes the vault through this innermost section. Then the second zone is the peripheral corneal zone, which should also clear the cornea and is used to raise or lower the depth through the central vault zone. The third zone in the lens is the limbal lift zone, which is primarily used to increase or decrease the vault through the limbus and peripheral cornea. Finally, the outer zone of the lens is the scleral landing zone which is meant to distribute the weight of the lens across the conjunctiva and create a healthy alignment. The Smart Lens Trial Set has three distinct diameters, a symmetric landing 15 mm and the 15.5 and 16.5 mm diameters, both with toric alignment zones. Each lens is labeled according to its sagittal depth where the lower height lenses are used for more symmetric eye shapes and the higher sags for the irregular or bulging corneas. The 15 mm trials include the two most commonly used sags, which are presented in white. The trials in gray are available to practitioners but are not part of the standard set. There are a larger number of 15.5 mm diameter diagnostics, which include seven lenses to cover post-refractive surgical cases, normal depth eyes, and higher depth conditions such as keratoconus. The Smart Lens Set also includes seven lenses in the 16.5 mm diagnostics for highly irregular eyes with both low and high SAG options. If your practice sees a large number of specific conditions or the ethnicity of your region requires unique trial configurations in diameter or sagittal depth, your smart lens consultant can assist with expanding your trial set to include additional lenses. To begin fitting, Talk to your consultant or see the fitting guide to learn more about how to choose the appropriate diameter and sag. Remember that one of the principal uses of the diagnostic set is to determine the trial sag with the correct vault. As suggested previously, clearing corneal and limbal tissue is one of the primary fitting goals. The smart lens should go on eye with 300 to 400 microns of pre-settling apical clearance. Then after settling, a fluid layer of 200 to 300 microns is recommended. However, you have the ability to custom order as much or as little fluid as you desire beneath the lens. Increasing or decreasing the sag of lens 
will change the fluid thickness between lens and cornea. The smart lens allows numerous approaches to optimize the fluid layer. Diagnostically fitting or ordering a different labeled sag of lens is the best method to make larger 200 micron or greater jumps in vault. Another approach is to take the sag of lens you trial fit and order the custom lens with a different base curve. This can be an effective way to make small or large refinements to vault. Additionally, the peripheral corneal zone can also be used to refine the apical clearance. It is recommended to use the peripheral corneal zone when you want to make smaller changes of 150 microns or less. For bigger alterations in vault, change the source sag of lens or associated base curve. The smart lens uses the trial sag as its principal identifying parameter. Each diagnostic sag has a specific base curve associated with it. Ordering a custom lens using the labeled sag automatically tells Spectrum International which base curve and unique zone parameters go with it. However, you have the ability to order a custom base curve if you want to alter the sag of lens or change the lacrimal lens power and resultant lens thickness. A one diopter change in base curve creates an approximately 50 micron alteration in sag. If you order the 4000 micron 16.5 millimeter diameter with a one diopter flatter base curve, then the resultant custom lens should have 50 microns less apical clearance. Order the 4000 micron 16.5 smart lens with a base curve one diopter steeper and the custom should have 50 microns more apical clearance. Adjust the base curve only when you want to make alterations in the custom lens of 200 microns or greater. Remember to always include the source trial sag in the order as the smart lens is not labeled according to the base curve but rather its identifying sag. Although this is a logical and simple approach to making sag changes, your smart lens consultant will typically alter the source sag of lens when large jumps in vault are required. But altering the base curve provides flexibility in how you approach customization of the smart lens parameters. The peripheral corneal zone of the smart lens is used to raise or lower the central vault zone of the lens. Ordering a PCZ plus 4 increases the fluid thickness or vault throughout the inner central vault zone. Whereas ordering PCZ minus 4 decreases the vault through the center. The peripheral corneal zone is used to make fine tuning adjustments to the custom lens apical clearance. A one step adjustment creates a 25 micron change in central vault, and the PCZ can be ordered from plus 15 to minus 15. However, it is recommended to use this adjustment for smaller sag alterations of 150 microns or less. In highly oblate post-surgical eyes, the PCZ can be decreased to create a reverse geometry construction. Or for highly bulging eyes, the PCZ can be increased to create a more prolate construction. The third zone in the smart lens is the limbal lift zone, or LLZ. This section of the lens controls the vault through the limbus and also changes the peripheral corneal elevation as well. Ordering LLZ plus 4 increases the clearance through the limbus and overall elevation through the central two zones of the lens. Conversely, ordering LLZ minus 4 decreases the limbal vault and overall clearance through the central two zones. A one-step adjustment to the LLZ creates a 25 micron change to the apical clearance. 
The limbal lift zone can be modified from plus 15 to minus 15 in extreme cases. However, the typical reason to alter this zone is when you have inadequate limbal and peripheral corneal vault. In such cases, order LLZ plus 5 to make a significant increase in depth. If increasing the limbal vault would create excessive apical clearance, you can compensate by decreasing the peripheral corneal zone. For example, if you had bearing on the limbus, but the apical clearance was acceptable, you could order LLZ plus 5 and PCZ minus 5. The positive LLZ would increase limbal vault, but the negative PCZ would neutralize the extra central elevation and leave the apical clearance the same. Your Smart Lens consultant can assist or bring clarity to these customizing options. One observation that's very common in scleral lens fitting is the temporal inferior decentration of the lenses. This usually creates thinning of the fluid or even bearing on the nasal superior peripheral cornea and limbus. The decentration is normal, but should we be concerned the lens is touching or will bear and rub on the epithelium after settling? In cases where you have less than 180 degrees of thinning or possible touch, do what we call the fixation change test. On this left eye, we see thinning of the fluid or possible touch nasal superior. Is this a concern that requires modification? When this presents, have the patient look in the opposite direction to the area of concern. In this case, we have the patient look left or temporal on this eye. Notice how the lens moves slightly nasal as the patient looks temporal. Then it's apparent that with that small movement, the lens completely vaults the nasal limbus and peripheral cornea. Similarly, if we have the patient look down in the opposite direction to the superior thinning, we see the lens move slightly up. The area of concern completely disappears and we have a lens with a healthy vault. The fixation change test would suggest to us the area of thinning is not likely an inadequate limbal or peripheral corneal vault. We are simply observing the natural tendency of scleral lenses to position inferior temporal, which thins the fluid layer nasal superior. When you question whether the lens needs a modified limbal lift zone to raise the lens off the peripheral cornea and limbus, perform this fixation change test. If manipulating the gaze does not eliminate the thinning or bearing, then it's certain you should order an increased LLZ. Typically, plus five steps is the appropriate modification. And when in doubt, you can always have the patient wear the lenses for a number of hours, then remove the lens and perform a floor scene evaluation of the eye surface. If there is any sign of mechanical bearing, then you know the vault of the limbal lift zone needs to be increased. Near the beginning of this video, we discussed how the conjunctival landing of the lens was one of the two principal fitting considerations. The smart lens has been designed for the median scleral angle or middle of the bell curve in the patient population. If you place a smart lens on a patient with a flat scleral angle, the edge may fit on the tight side and cause restriction of the vessels and blanching. In such cases, increasing the edge lift is necessary. Order scleral landing zone minus one for extremely mild restriction. SLZ minus 2 for moderate blanching, for instance, when you see opposing sides with blanching. If the lens appears tight over greater than 180 degrees, then order SLZ minus 3. 
The reason an increase in edge lift is a minus adjustment is because this modification reduces the overall sag of the lens. SLZ minus 1 changes the sag at the apex of the lens by 25 microns, similar to the other zones in the smart lens. A plus one step adjustment to any zone increases sag 25 microns. A minus one step adjustment decreases sag 25 microns. Increasing edge lift decreases the overall sag of a contact lens and the smart lens, so it's a negative value adjustment. Your smart lens diagnostics will provide the appropriate fit for the vast majority of patients you see. However, because we fit sclerals on such challenging eyes, it is not uncommon to require customization to the parameters. The most commonly modified section is the peripheral corneal zone. As we discussed earlier, this is usually used to create fine-tune adjustments to the sag to create the ideal amount of fluid between lens and cornea in the custom. The second most commonly modified zone in the smart lens is the scleral landing zone. Approximately one in three cases may have a flatter scleral surface or angle which requires a smart lens with a slightly flatter landing. Near to one in five patients may require an increased limbal lift zone to clear or vault the limbus and peripheral cornea. This is required when the patient has a steeper rather than flatter scleral angle. As you would imagine, both the cornea and sclera come in a wide range of shapes. For this reason, the smart lens is highly customizable Finally, the base curve is the least modified zone. We discussed earlier how there are many ways to optimize the central vault. We can change the source sag of lens. We can alter the PCZ and we can change the base curve. Your smart lens consultant is going to encourage you to order the best fitting diagnostic lens sag. Then modify the PCZ if small apical clearance adjustments of 150 microns or less are required. As previously reviewed, the human sclera comes in many shapes. It may present as symmetric, toric, or asymmetric. The vast majority of the time, the standard smart lens landing will be appropriate for your patients. The smaller 15O is symmetric, as the sclera tends to be more uniform in height, closer to the limbus. For the larger 15.5 and 16.5 mm diameters, a toric landing best manages most eye shapes. There will be an extremely small percentage of cases where you may need a symmetric landing in the larger 16.5 mm. There may be times when you need a toric in the 15 millimeter diameter. For a percentage of cases, the toricity may need to be increased or decreased from the standard trial parameters. And in very rare cases, you may even require an asymmetric landing, which can happen in highly elevated pinguecula patients or very abnormal scleral surfaces. For this reason, the smart lens is available with a quadrant-specific landing or asymmetric construction. Your smart lens consultant can help you build a lens that lifts over highly elevated surfaces or drops where the scleral elevation depresses. To help determine if you have a good lens-to-surface relationship, perform the rotation test on your toric landing 15.5 and 16.5 mm diagnostics. After a few minutes of settling, observe the axis of the rotation markers and whether they are stable. Then rotate the lens 90 degrees and see if the markers return to the same resting position. If they do, it is likely that you have the correct match of tericity of lens to tericity of sclera. If the lens is not rotationally stable, 
or won't return to the same marker axis. Then you know the landing may need to be modified. It is important to note that the smart lens markers indicate the flat meridian of the lens and are meant to find the flat meridian of the sclera. The patient's corneal cylinder and scleral astigmatism are typically two completely different axes. In other words, if the patient has with the rule corneal astigmatism, do not expect the smart lens to orient with the flat meridian markers at 3 and 9 o'clock. Upon application, the smart lens should rotate and settle into the flat meridian of the sclera, wherever it might be. If we have a good match of lens tericity to scleral tericity, the smart lens should be rotationally stable. The markers are not meant to be at a specific axis like a soft toric lens, but they should be rotationally stable. Another helpful tool to determine if you need a symmetric, toric, or asymmetric landing is to perform the fluorescein test. In cases where you lack rotational stability, or where bubbles find their way under the lens after a successful application, or you are suspect the landing of the lens requires adjustment, then apply the smart lens without fluorescein. That means no fluorescein in the eye or behind the lens. Set the patient up behind the slit lamp and in focus. Then paint the front of the lens with a fluorescein strip and immediately observe where the dye may ingress behind the lens. This can tell you a great deal about where the smart lens is landing and where it may not have the proper alignment or pressure. In this case, we understand why the bubbles are building up behind the lens. There is landing across the horizontal meridian, but we lack good alignment across the vertical, which allows bubbles to get in. Altering the landing of the lens can eliminate the bubbles from squeezing under the lens and will also improve the overall distribution of pressure across the entire bulbar conjunctiva. Do not routinely perform the fluorescein test, but use it when you are uncertain about the type of landing you need, be it symmetric, less toric, more toric, or asymmetric. If the fluorescein leaks in on opposing meridians under a symmetric, 15 mm smart lens diagnostic, then you require a toric. In the 15.5 or 16.5 mm toric smart lenses, observe if the fluorescein comes in near the flat meridian markers or under the opposing meridian. If the dye ingresses near the markers, that would indicate we have too much tericity. If the fluorescein comes in under the non-scribed or steep axis, that indicates we need more tericity in the alignment zone. If the fluorescein comes in under one single quadrant, it might indicate we need an asymmetric. Observe and record the findings and speak with your smart lens consultant who can assist with the customization to the parameters. In summary, there are a few important observations you can make to optimize the fit of your smart lenses. First, and maybe most important, determine which trial has the correct sagittal depth and vault over the cornea. Expect that most of your scleral lenses will decenter, typically inferior temporal. If the patient is comfortable and there aren't concerning slit lamp findings, then changes should not be made. Considering the normal lens decentration and the irregular corneas we fit with smart lenses, an asymmetric fluid layer is to be expected. Again, if the slit lamp is negative for any findings, do not be concerned the tear layer may be thicker in some areas and thinner in others. When you want to fine-tune the sag or apical clearance, use the peripheral corneal zone to make adjustments. 
If the lens is bearing on the limbus or peripheral cornea, increase the limbal lift zone. Perform the fixation change test when you are unsure if adjustments should be made. Or allow the lens to settle, then remove an instill fluorescein to observe signs of bearing. Always check if the scleral landing zone touches down without the presence of vessel restriction. Raise the edge lift if necessary or perform the rotation and fluorescein test to determine how the landing should be altered. For more information on the smart lens, speak with the Precision and Cardinal team. Thank you.